Whoa, very good. <clears throat> okay. So we just learned that inside us, there are two souls, a godly soul and an animal soul, fighting for domination over us. They want to rule us. The godly soul would love that we would be more connected with God and do mitzvah. On the other hand, we have the animal soul, which wants us to be more physical. And we're constantly having a battle. So the Altid Ebbe said, we're always having issues. Should I do the right thing? Should I do the wrong thing? So the Altid Ebbe said, in the beginning of chapter 12, that a person who's righteous always does the right thing. The one who is wicked chooses to do the wrong thing. You can be so caught up into never keeping kosher, never observing Shabbos. How are you ever going to get to win a decision in you? For example, the example that I give for those that live in Los Angeles, you're hungry, you're on Pico. Should I go for lunch into Jeff's, to Pat's, La Gondola? Or should I just go to in and out Burger, Subway, etc.? So when you have this dilemma, most of the time we go with our animal, with our physical. So being that the animal has conquered our city, how is the godly, how are you ever going to change? So the al Rebbe said at the beginning of chapter 12, a fantastic teaching. And what was the fantastic teaching that it taught? Is that don't go and try to make drastic changes. Don't go cold turkey and say, okay, for the rest of my life, I'm only going to keep kosher. It's not going to happen. It's too much of a weight. It's like New Year's. Someone goes and says, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year. You're not going to lose the 50 pounds. It's too big to carry. So what did the Alta Rebbe say? Take baby steps. Be a bane in the what is a bainani? A bainani is an in-between person. Right now I have a struggle. And because right now I have a struggle, I choose to do the right thing. So in other words, should I go, should I go to Jeff's? Yes, why not? It won't bother you that you chose Jeff's over non-kosher, because it's a one-time thing. The next time you're hungry and you're having this fight in your head, choose it also. I'll give you, I'm gonna give two examples. One example is that if you're going to want to lose weight, don't go and say, I gotta lose 50 pounds right now. That could be a goal. But don't go and say, I gotta do it now and go crazy, because the weight is too heavy. What would Delta Debbie suggest? Say I want to lose two pounds. <laughs> Once you feel good about losing two pounds, don't tell them I want to lose another two pounds. So it's these are tiny, tiny steps of making right decisions until your entire way of living, these tiny things, is like I'm making the right choice. And again, it, and the animal in you gets weaker and weaker on this situation. I'll give you another example. Many times when I'm counseling a husband and a wife, so I can go and ask one of the spouses after talking with them, no, how are things going? And the person will go and write to me, I don't think he, she is ever going to change. They said they were going to call you but I doubt it very much. So now let's take that scenario, which happens too often because we're always thinking negative about somebody or we're in a situation that we are feeling negative about somebody. So immediately I jumped all over the person and said, don't assume. Maybe the person did call me. In other words, why are you choosing always to be negative? I get it. 
It's always been bad. It's always been hostilities. It's always this. It's always that. But if you have a choice for a moment to think positive instead of negative, stay positive. Because when you go negative, you're feeling rotten during this moment. It's not that you're fooling yourself. What you're really doing is, I'm trying to stay in a happy place. I'm trying to stay in a place that's not so dark. And the reason why this is so important, Dr. Deb, is going to tell us in a moment, which is going to be what we're going to be learning now, is because every decision we make, if we do it in a positive way, it gives us strength to continue on. But if you decide to stay in the abyss, and if you continue to stay, is it's negative, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to, like the Alta number seven, chapter one, the most important thing for a human being is to be happy. And what's keeping you from being happy? Your ego, your evil thoughts, your animals, the shop. So if we look, Dr. Ebb is now going to go and say something so radical in about, in, in about a page from now. It's, it's something you've all heard, but it's so radical. Remember, once the Alta Rebbe put these thoughts in print, the world uses it and becomes part of the mantra of the world. Comes the Alta Rebbe and says, it's not good. You, you're going to see, it's not enough to have, you ever notice you always have good slogans. You always have, you always have a good meme. You ever notice all day long, you, you're reading on Instagram, oh, that's a nice thought. <laughs> you got to take that thought and work with it. It's a nice thing. Mm, that's nice. The Alta Rebbe is going to teach us that we have to constantly work with that. But before we get to the work part, I want to reiterate what we're about to get into. The Alta Rebbe is going to teach us that there are times we have negative thoughts. How to make the right choice. Later on, he's going to say we have negative feelings, emotions, or my mouth talks negative. You ever notice people, the second something comes up, you're not even thinking. It's like, and you just blab out. I'll give you an example. Go to, go, go to a Democrat and say the word Donald Trump. The first word's out of his mouth. Oh, oh, I hate you. I hate him. Go say to a Republican Biden, an idiot, he's destroying the country. You're not even thinking. Your mouth pops off. Because it's so kidnapped by the animal soul. So you can have your thoughts kidnapped. You have your mouth kidnapped. It's like knee jerk. And sometimes the reactions, your physical actions, you see somebody, you start getting angry inside or, or, or whatever it is, it's so knee jerk. Um, it, it, it's Shabbos. I just go into the room and I just turn on the light. It's like you are so trapped with your actions, you don't even know how to get out of it. So how do you change? Why do I have to go and say in front of a Democrat or a, a Republican, how do I learn to bite my tongue? How do I learn that when I do something with my hands, whatever it is, it's always a bully or whatever. It is. How do I learn? How do I change something? That has become so natural to me. How do I have in my mind that I'm plotting negative things? I'm thinking negative things. You can't. So now the Rebbe now is going to teach us about how to control thoughts in your mind, which is one of the hardest things to do. Let's be honest. You go tell somebody, don't think about something. <laughs> tell somebody, don't think about something. Guess what you do? <laughs> You're thinking about it. So now the Rebbe is going to have to show us how we can start changing the way we think about the person, our relationship, how, how we think about our country. Do I have to be a certain way? Whatever your thoughts are, how do I take control to be better? So now let's see what the Alter Rebbe says on page 177. I hope, I hope I'm making sense. 
And I'm, I'm trying to break it down as easy as possible so that we'll all be able to um, appreciate what the Altareb is about to teach us. So the Altareb, it goes and says on page 177, we must remember, what's the most important thing that we must remember? That the divine soul has a lot of energy in it. It has 10 different energies. Remember, three of them are intellectual. Seven of them are more emotional, and it leads us to action-based. So it says, what's the problem? Um, the, uh, the godly soul does not hold sovereignty over you. You didn't make that the godly soul shall rule every one of your actions, every one of your decisions. Let's be realistic. It doesn't. Yes, we're proud to be Jewish. Yes, we're proud to be good people. But nevertheless, we still have many of our actions, many of our thoughts, many of our words is not the ultimate way to be. Why? Because you have not allowed it to have total sovereignty over you. Only at specific times. When do you allow your godly soul to take over you? When do you allow the godly soul to be your power? When does the godly soul become your strength? For example, when you're saying prayers for someone who is sick, you're totally, you're, you're totally concentrating, oh, God, please help this person. Or all of a sudden, I need to say Shema. So you say Shema Yisrael. Listen, Jewish people, Hashem Aleikeinu. Our God is the Almighty, higher than nature. God, God is the ultimate. Hashem Echad, and God is one. Everything in this world, is in God. So those six words, I can hold my concentration that I could be totally all my thoughts. My By the way, your head can't have two thoughts at the same time. So while you're praying for someone who is sick, you say, Almighty God, please, please listen to my prayers. This is a song of a sense. I lift my eyes to the heaven and I ask from which shall my strength come from. You're watching somebody in a hospital sick. You need strength to help this person. So you put your, your eyes up and you say, Ezri Mayim Hashem, where shall my energy, where shall my strength come from? Ezri Mayim Hashem, and you continue reading from the book of Psalms, Ezri Mayim Hashem, my strength comes from God. So because somebody is sick, you're totally focusing on praying for that person. You don't allow anything else to come into your head. You don't allow anything else to pop into your head. Why? I need the devotion. I need my thoughts. I need my concentration. I am the lawyer standing in front of God and pleading, help this person that's in the bed next to me here in the hospital. So while you're doing something holy or you're in synagogue and you need to take a few moments to literally concentrate, I wish that my child would have a shidduch get married. I wish my child will have children. I wish that my spouse will be healthy. And you go and you take a few words and you close your eyes and you meditate strong and you whisper words to God. So during these moments, your godly soul is totally taking over your mind. Why? Because I need to stay connected with God. So every single time somebody is in desperate need, we know how hard you concentrate. And then while you're saying your prayer, like Shema or Tehillim, your mind is working, your godly mind is working. That means, remember, there are three energies of the soul to the mind. There's the Chochma, wisdom. There's the Bina, the understanding. There is the Das, which is knowledge. So you're reading the words, you're taking it in. These are words you gather, you're saying words that have great wisdom to it. And you're going like this, from where shall my strength come from? 
And then you meditate even harder. And you're going to say, I want to understand what these words mean. I literally recognize only from you, God, comes my strength. So you're using the power of understanding. And you're looking at the sick person. And you're using your das, your knowledge. And you're using it. Right now, I'm thinking of ways. What other things can I go and do for this person, maybe give Siddhanka. So your free intellectual, entire energy of your soul is totally connected to God. And sometimes you start thinking, God is wondrous. God is the greatest power. He can do anything. And you start thinking, if God is so powerful, within a second I know, God can cure this person. So while you're thinking about this, you you all of a sudden you start feeling a love for God because you know he can do this. So the mind is all of a sudden arousing the heart to be able to go and say, I love you, Hashem. I love you, God. I know you can go and heal. I know you can send my daughter a shidduch or my son a shidduch to get married or children or help or my husband or I should have a better livelihood. The deal should go through so I can go and pay my mortgage and give tzedakah. Your mind is so attached while you're praying. Is that not only that? Even your heart where the animal soul lives is getting aroused with love. But we must remember, the animal soul only lives in the left part of the heart. The right side of the heart is all is a place where your passion can come from a holy place. So in the right side of the heart is now filling with the love because your godliness shum is taking over in your brain. Your brain is now, I will say, has been captured by the king of goodness, meaning a godly soul. So it rules your mind for these moments. Wow, is this powerful? But then all of a sudden, the author ever goes on to say, I got news for you, that when the love is so great and you're standing by this person in bed, or you're standing in your home and you're asking God for something. Or you're standing in synagogue and you're asking for something. In other words, your mind is totally enwrapped in prayer. Or your mind is totally enwrapped in a Torah thought. And you're learning something and you go, wow, this beautiful Judaism, this beautiful Torah teaching is so fantastic. Even the last part where the animal is feels it, it can't, it can't do anything. So some of it even goes, and the right side of the heart is filled with love. The left part is feeling the heat of the love. Wow. At that moment, you're like the holiest person in the world. You feel that you're the holiest person in the world. You are, I, I'm not going to use the word rapture. I'm not going to get into these wacky words that the world uses. But you know that you're only feeling that you could be in. Ah. But then Dr. Rebbe says something. <laughs> but the moment you stop praying, the moment you stop using your mind for prayer and for Torah study, all of a sudden, the left part wakes up. Ah, you wait. And all of a sudden, it pops into your head other things. Okay, you're hungry now. Let's stop thinking about prayer. <laughs> it happens like that, like that, like that. It throws in wacky thoughts into your head. It knew it couldn't do anything while you were praying. But we must remember something powerful. Just like you didn't make the godly soul to be the sole ruler of you, you still haven't allowed the animal soul to be the sole ruler of you. So in other words, you're back to 
What should I do to decision making? I was feeling so good. I love my feeling when I'm in a Tanya class. I love when I'm learning Toyota. I love when I'm really focusing on my prayer. I love when I'm sitting with my family on Passover night and watching me and my family and my guests, everybody totally immersed in the eating of the matzah. I can feel the holiness of the moment. I get it the moment that it goes, finishes, the animal soul starts going and starts putting crazy ideas in me because it says, yo, 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 I'm not going to let your head go and think like this a whole time. So you're back to the battle again. What should I do? So the al Rebbe is going to give you another tool. And this, my dear friends, is going to blow your mind. So I need you to download this piece of information that I'm about to give to you. And this piece of information is one of the most cardinal principle rules of Judaism. We're about to go and learn it. is teaching us. Hi. Altereb is teaching us that you're a human being. The fact that you're a human being, what makes you human? You have a mind. And the reason why I created you different than animals is because your mind can control the desires of the heart. Yes, my dear friends, let me give you a few examples. You're going shopping. And all of a sudden you say, oh, I need these shoes. I need these shoes. I can't live with these, without these shoes. Or you go into the grocery store and say, I need this cereal. I need this food. I need. I want. And you buy on impulse, which, by the way, every car salesman, every jewelry salesperson, every uh, Saks, uh, Chanel, and, and Bloomingdale's, and every person in Ralph says, what? I don't want you thinking just by on emotion. Because while you're looking at these beautiful shoes, while you're looking at this food, ask yourself one question. Why do I need this? The moment you intellectualize the emotion, the emotion dies. Why do I need it? Uh, so I can we were at so-and-so's wedding. Really? And what are you going to do with it after? I don't know, but it's worth $1,200. Put it now. And then what happens? You have a whole closet filled of stuff. Why? You have a whole pantry full of food. Why? You're not going to eat it. It's still sitting there. You ever see children, mommy, 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 I need this dress. I need this pants. I need this, I need this, I need that. And then all of a sudden, two days later, they don't care about it. It's on the box, on the floor. I'll take care of it. I need this toy. It's all over the place. It's broken. They don't care. Because the heart has no intellect. The heart is just, I want, I want, I want. And whenever we go with the heart, comes out to that and says, but you're a human. You don't have to follow the desires of your heart, which is the animal soul. The animal soul is all about an animal. Go get, take what you want, roar, be angry. What are you being angry for? What are you upset about? What are you acting like this for? The person looks at you. What are you crazy? I'm angry. Why? Explain it to me. I don't know. I don't know. So why did you get angry? I don't know. Or did they bothered me? Yes, so calm yourself down. Choose to be another. So your mind, Moyes Charlotte Al Halev. The mind, if you use it, can calm all the emotions of the heart. A man was created from birth that every person may, with the power of the will of his brain, says the Alter Rebbe. 
restrain him and herself and control the drives of the, uh, of the animal heart and all the lusts, preventing his heart's desire. So I'm angry. So all of a sudden the heart goes and says, you're angry. I have another lust for you. You're hurt. Good, now I'm angry. I'm hurt. How am I going to calm myself? Go take a drink. Come, go numb it. I go and I, so one leads to the other. The animal says, feed me, feed me, feed me. So you start getting used to drinking uh, booze or alcohol to numb the pain. Or you start taking drugs to go to sleep to numb the pain. Before you know it, you're an alcoholic and you're a drug addict. What does it mean? You're addicted to these things because you allowed yourself to go. After the passions of the heart, that the body feels so connected on these emotions. But if you use your mind, but if you divert your attention away from the craving of the heart, one day every addict who takes it takes a drug or drinks wine. I, I need the buzz. I need the, the way these clothes feel, whatever it is. The moment you divert yourself from this and you ask yourself, really, really? Instead of saying, I want, which is the animal. And all of a sudden you allow the godly neshama to enter in in other words, your intellect, which is based on holiness. Remember, your intellect could be based what, on the animal. But the animal is using it to con you into justification why you should continue doing the wrong thing. But if you use the godly neshama and you use your holy intellect and the right intellect, how else do you think? You stop being an addict. You have to hit rock bottom and all of a sudden pierces light into your head and says, what am I doing with myself? I got to get out of here. How much more so a Jew towards Judaism? Why am I always doing this and doing that? Why am I not getting closer to God? So even one thought, even one action in your bainini, and you say, I'm hungry. And you say, instead of me going to subways, Instead of me going to in and out Burger or even a vegetarian restaurant, because I assume it may be kosher. And you go and say, I'm going to a kosher establishment. Or one time that you go on and go and think bad about somebody, whether it's a friend. You ever notice when friends get into a fight, they start thinking bad and it consumes you for days. And you call up everybody, I need to talk about it. It's like such child, teenage, high school days. Because the animal has you. How do you get out of it? Comes out to them and says, I told you. One moment at a time. Stop thinking bad about this person. Don't drink this right now. Hold your anger. Don't buy this on impulse. One tiny action. And we're about to get a again. Dalton Epi says something fantastic. It is written the following. That it says by, it says that I saw this wisdom surpass my foolishness. Light surpasses darkness, which means, which means, ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba, this is a big tool. One tiny candle, one tiny light dispels so much darkness. Yes, let's repeat that. One tiny match can light up a dark room. One positive choice, one time you hold back from your crazy passion, one time you hold off the animal soul, it dispels a lot of darkness and it weakens the animal soul more than you know.
Let me repeat that. The power of a Bainini is who? I'm sorry if it's, uh, <laughs> I just noticed I'm screaming. I don't know, I'm being passionate. I hope, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't know. But, but why? Because one tiny thought of positive transforms you and gave you the power. You don't have to do the negatives. It's so unbelievable that it weakens the animal more than you know. Now we know that a lion that gets a scratch, it backs off for a second, but it comes back. So don't worry about it. Your animal soul will drive you crazy again. So each time drive you crazy, one, one moment at a time. Make the right decision again. The right decision again. Before you know it, the lion doesn't bother you anymore. Eventually you start realizing, I don't have to go to buy shoes always from Saks. I don't have to always buy on kosher food. I don't always have to get angry. You're controlling your, your thoughts. One tiny drop of light dispels much darkness. Why? Because the wisdom that is in your godly soul is a beautiful streak of light, of holiness, of godliness. And you acted on that impulse and it goes into your heart, the right side of the heart. And you feel good. Oh, I didn't get angry. Wow, that was good. The left side of the heart recognize you gave me a big body blow. You fought me off. Oh, I'll try again later. I'm a smart fox. I'll come another way. But right now, take your victory. You lost two pounds. You didn't take the drink right now. The moment you didn't take the drink, at that moment, you fought off your addiction. Doesn't mean you're still not addicted to it. But I empowered myself that I can control my addiction. I can control my anger. I can control why I don't do anything Jewish. And I did something Jewish. So in every aspect of your life, be a bane in me. So Dr. Debbie just showed you how in your mind, if you just make the right thought, we didn't get into your, your mouth, we get to your action, how to go about doing moments of bane in me. But Dr. Debbie wants to teach you that if you use your mind, instead of justifying everything, and by the way, Rush Limbaugh once used a word uh, when it came to the new way people are being brought up in schools, they don't want you thinking anymore or they don't want you to have critical thinking. So he says, we're raising skulls of mush. That was a great line, skulls of mush, whether you like him or not like him, but it's very, very true. We are becoming a people. Don't think, just do. It feels good, just do it. Who cares about the consequences? Just do it. You don't have to have any responsibilities. We're becoming more and more of a people of less responsible of what we are uh, or of our actions. And in Judaism, God created you and gave you a mission and told you, I've given you a mission, you're a Jew. Even to the non-Jew, I created you to be a human being. You have purpose. I created you with the image of God. You can't act like an animal because if you act like an animal, the world's going to get messed up. All of a sudden, your laws don't mean anything. These people you will let in, you don't let in, you, know, you open the border. It, it, all thinking people realize there's something wrong when you just go after your emotions. The border has to stay closed. You can't let everybody in. You can just like a human being. You can't let every thought come into your ears. I can't listen to rap music. There's four letter words coming into my ears. You just can't have open borders on the micro. And if you allow everything in, then how are you going to make the old? But it makes me feel good. Every single second is another Instagram. Oh, it made me feel good. Whereas you notice we need 45 minutes to an hour. It takes time to learn Torah. 
that we totally understand the situation. <sighs> Microwave food versus slow cooking, which tastes better. Comes the animal and says, I couldn't care less. Microwave, or I want to eat now. I want to be pleasured now. Comes the Alter Rebbe and says, Shh, hold off the passion and let one thought choose right one time because light dispels a lot of darkness. And because of this one light, dispels much darkness, eventually your thinking becomes better, your actions become much better, the way you talk becomes much better. You know, I, you, know you sometimes have people and they're talking to their masses and every other word is a, letter, is a, is a four letter word, four letter words. It's like, well, my gosh, can't you say the same thing without the four letter words? And to them, they can't. But we're a Jew. We have to be a light to the world. We have to be higher. So you have your choice. Either think like them, speak like them, and act like them. But a Jew doesn't want to do that. A Jew wants to do what we were created and chosen for. To do it the Torah way. But it's very, very hard to do the Torah way. Why? Okay. Can somebody unhook their mic? Please. So the thing is how this doesn't mean Jews and non-Jews that don't have filters in their thoughts, in their speech, and their actions are bad people. No, they're regular human beings that choose to go more with the animal. But they are an image of God. They were created as a human. They're not chimpanzees. We're not apes. We're not gorillas. We're human beings that have the power of critical thinking. Comes out that up and says, I know it's hard to change over, make transformation in a second. Do it one moment at a time. Be a bainity right now. If you do this one action and hold off your passion. I have to have this cheesecake now. I'm angry. I'm hurt. And you, you calm down. You find another way to calm yourself down without eating cheesecake. You'll empower yourself. You'll feel better. Instead of raging angry at somebody every time they get you upset, you bite your tongue. What time? You'll start realizing, hmm, I'm impressed. I was able to handle the situation in a better way. One good action dispels a lot of darkness. This, my dear friends, is literally one of the most powerful chapters in Tanya, chapter 12, because it eventually is teaching you all the tools. <sighs> but you're still not righteous. You're still on the fence. Righteous people only think positive. So how am I supposed to deal with my moment to moment, is it constantly a fight with me? How do I move on? More about that next week. Thank you all for coming to today's Tanya class.